Good day everyone, this is Dr. Soper here, and today we'll be working through a complete example in Python that demonstrates how a reinforcement learning based AI system can be used to maximize corporate profits in a complex scenario involving multiple options and millions of customers. The techniques used in this video were introduced and discussed in detail in the previous lessons in this series, so if you haven't yet had a chance to watch those previous videos, I would highly recommend that you do so before watching this video. Before we begin writing code in Python, let's discuss the business problem that we will be solving in this video by using an AI system that is based on Thompson sampling reinforcement learning. Imagine that you work for a wireless company that has 10 million customers. The company has decided that it would like to earn additional profits by launching a smartphone upgrade program. The company's marketing team has created eight different advertising campaigns, each of which offers customers specific features, promotions, or discounts if they will upgrade their smartphone. The average profit will vary from campaign to campaign, since the various features, promotions, and discounts will cost the company varying amounts of money. These costs can be easily calculated, however, so the company knows how much profit it will make per sale for each advertising campaign. What the company does not know is how effective each campaign will be. One or more advertising campaigns may be very effective, while others may not work well at all. Our goal, then, is to build an AI system that can maximize the company's profits for its smartphone upgrade program. Note that this is very different than simply trying to maximize the number of customers that participate in the smartphone upgrade program, because Maximizing profit will be a function not only of the number of customers that see each advertising campaign, but also of the effectiveness of each campaign in generating sales and the average profit per sale for each campaign. Now that we understand the business problem, let's switch to Python and get started. Before I begin describing the code in this notebook, I'd just like you to know that a link to this notebook is available in the video description. Please feel free to download a copy of the notebook to play with, or to adapt to your own needs. As usual, the first thing that we'll do is import the required Python libraries. We'll need two libraries for this project. NumPy, which we'll use to generate random values from a few different probability distributions, and Locale, which we'll use to properly format currency values. After all, since our goal is to maximize profits, we'll be dealing with a lot of money values in this project. Next, we're setting our current locale to the United States. Python will therefore know that it should format currency values into US dollars, and that it should use commas to separate large numbers. If you need your currency values to be formatted differently, then please feel free to change the locale to whatever works best for you. The next line of code simply defines a seed for the random number generator. This ensures that you will be able to exactly reproduce the results that we'll see in this video if you decide to download and run the notebook yourself. Our next task is to define a class to hold details about the various advertising campaigns. We'll use this class to create eight different advertising campaign objects, each of which will keep track of the attributes or characteristics of one of the advertising campaigns. Using campaign objects in this way will allow us to separate all of the campaign-related details from the rest of the program logic. This will make it much easier to understand how the AI actually learns and makes decisions. As you can see, each campaign object is initialized by passing in a unique campaign ID. The init function will then assign the campaign a random conversion rate between 1% and 20% by using NumPy to draw a random value from a uniform probability distribution. The conversion rate indicates the percentage of customers that will choose to upgrade their smartphones if they are exposed to a particular advertising campaign. Remember, the wireless company does not know this information. We're also using NumPy to assign a random amount of profit per successful sale of between $100 and $200 for each campaign. Although we're assigning these per sale profit values randomly, we could just as easily use specific values provided by the wireless company for each advertising campaign. Remember that the company knows the cost and sales price of the smartphone, as well as the per sale costs associated with each campaign's features, promotions, and discounts. 
It could therefore easily calculate the profit per unit sold for each advertising campaign. In addition to the conversion rate and the average profit per sale, we also want to keep track of the total number of customers who choose to upgrade their smartphones after being exposed to each advertising campaign, that is, sales, as well as the total number of customers who do not upgrade their smartphones, that is, no sales. Aside from the init function, our advertising campaign class contains several additional convenience functions that can perform some useful calculations for us. The first of these is a total trials function that returns the total number of times a campaign has been tried. Next is a total profit function that returns the total profit that a campaign has thus far generated. Next is an actual profit per trial function that returns the actual amount of profit per trial for a campaign. Finally, we have an expected profit per trial function that returns the expected or theoretical amount of profit per trial. Again, the company would not know this information, and our AI system will never get to see or use this information. This function is only included to facilitate our learning by allowing us to understand what the results should ideally look like if our AI agent is performing well. Aside from the functions that belong to the advertising campaign class, we have one additional function in our project called try campaign. The purpose of this function is to try a specific advertising campaign on a customer and record whether or not a sale occurred. That is, whether or not the customer decided to upgrade her smartphone after seeing the advertising campaign. Once our AI system has decided which campaign to show to a particular customer, it will call this function. The function will then determine if a sale occurred or not by checking whether a random number between 0 and 1 is less than or equal to the campaign's conversion rate. If so, the customer bought the smartphone upgrade. If not, then no sale occurred. Now we're ready to initialize the characteristics of our environment. First, we specify that there will be 8 different advertising campaigns and that the company has 10 million customers. We then define a list that we'll use to keep track of all of our advertising campaign objects in one convenient place. Next, we actually create our eight advertising campaign objects. Remember, when we create a new campaign object, that object will be randomly assigned a conversion rate and an amount of profit per sale. From this information, we can calculate the theoretically expected amount of profit per trial, and this value is being printed to the screen here in order to facilitate our learning. It is important to remember, however, that this is only for our learning purposes. The wireless company would not have this information, and neither would our AI agent. Okay, let's run this code cell and see what our expected profits per trial are for each advertising campaign. As you can see, campaign three is clearly expected to generate the most profit per trial, followed by campaigns 6 and 5. As such, if our AI agent is effective in learning about its environment, it will choose to show campaign 3 to customers much more frequently than any other campaign with a view toward maximizing profits. Again, remember that the AI agent does not have access to these expected profit data. Instead, it will need to try to discover this information on its own by taking actions and learning from what happens as a result of those actions. Next, let's proceed with creating our simulation. The simulation is carried out using a set of nested for loops, with the outer loop running once for each of the wireless company's customers, and the inner loop running once for each of the eight advertising campaigns. The general strategy for the simulation will follow two steps. First, the AI agent will consider what it has learned about the various advertising campaigns and will decide which campaign to show to the current customer. It will then try the chosen campaign on the current customer and will record whether or not the customer purchased the smartphone upgrade. The AI agent will then use this information in the next round to help it decide which advertising campaign to show to the next customer. The process continues until each of the company's 10 million customers has been subjected to one of the eight advertising campaigns. For each customer, then, we begin by initializing a few variables to negative one. 
These variables will be used to keep track of the index of the advertising campaign that the AI agent decides to show this customer, and to keep track of the best, that is, highest, current beta value for each campaign. Next, for each possible advertising campaign, we use a Thompson sampling approach to draw a random value from a beta distribution whose shape is defined by the actual profit per trial that the AI agent has thus far observed for the current campaign. Note that the value of the B shape parameter is set to the number of campaign options divided by two. This is because in this scenario, we are interested in maximizing overall profits rather than simply maximizing the overall number of successful sales or wins as was the case with the previous video in this series. In such situations, I have found that a value of the B parameter that is some fraction of the total number of options from which the AI agent must select often works well in helping the agent to learn. After getting a random beta value for the current advertising campaign, we next check whether the beta value is the largest thus far observed for this customer. If so, then we update the value of the best beta value variable to match the current campaign's beta value, and we record the index of the current campaign. After we have checked the beta values for all eight advertising campaigns for this customer, the index of the campaign with the largest beta value will be stored in the index of campaign to try variable. The AI agent will then try showing that advertising campaign to the current customer and will record whether the campaign was successful, that is, whether the customer purchased the smartphone upgrade or not. We then repeat the process for the next customer, and then the next customer, and so on, until the AI agent has chosen a campaign for all 10 million of the wireless company's customers. At this point in our code, all 10 million customers have been subjected to an advertising campaign, and we're ready to see the results. In order to get an idea of how well our Thompson sampling approach works, we will compare its performance against a uniform sampling approach. We therefore create a few variables that will hold the total profits generated from each approach. Note that in uniform sampling, we simply show each of the eight advertising campaigns to an equal number of the wireless company's customers. We can easily calculate the number of customers that will see each campaign by dividing the total number of customers by the total number of advertising campaigns. Since the company has 10 million customers and 8 advertising campaigns, then with uniform sampling, each campaign will be shown to 1,250,000 of the company's customers. Finally, we use a for loop to iterate through the advertising campaign objects and print the average profits per trial and total number of trials for each campaign to the screen. These details will give us some insights into which advertising campaigns the AI agent chose to show to the company's customers. For the sake of convenience, we are also using the same for loop to compute the running profit totals for the Thompson sampling and uniform sampling methods. Once this for loop is finished, we then print the overall results of the simulation to the screen. Okay, let's run this code cell and see what happens. Since our AI agent needs to make decisions for 10 million different customers, this code will take a few minutes to run. Fortunately, we can see the results immediately by using the magic of video editing. As you can see, our AI agent identified Campaign 3 as being the most profitable, and hence chose to show that campaign to more than 7.8 million of the wireless company's 10 million customers. The next two most profitable campaigns were campaigns 6 and 5, which our AI agent chose to show to approximately 1.2 million and 620,000 customers, respectively. In total, then, nearly 97% of the company's 10 million customers were shown one of the three most profitable advertising campaigns with the single most profitable campaign being shown to more than 78% of all customers. Clearly, the AI agent was able to quickly learn about how well each campaign was performing and was able to capitalize on that information to maximize profits. But just how well did the AI agent's Thompson sampling method compare to a naive uniform sampling method? Well, as you can see, the decisions made by our AI agent 
yielded about $307 million in total profits for the wireless company, whereas the naive uniform sampling approach would have yielded only $101 million in profits. As such, our simple AI system was able to earn an extra $206 million for the wireless company, which equates to an increase in profits of more than 204%. Not bad for just 52 lines of code. In this lesson, we work through a complete example of a reinforcement learning-based AI system in Python that demonstrated how these technologies can be used to maximize profits by helping a wireless company identify and capitalize on the best advertising campaign for its smartphone upgrade program. The same approach, of course, could be applied to innumerable other business scenarios in which a company must decide how to allocate resources among a finite set of alternative investments when the expected rewards from each investment are unknown. Reinforcement learning based on Thompson sampling is indeed very powerful. In the next video in this series, we'll begin to investigate another major area in cognitive computing and artificial intelligence called Q-learning. I hope you'll join me for that video as well, since Q-learning will provide us with a tool that we can use to solve many more interesting problems. Well, my friends, thus ends our complete example of using Python to build a profit-maximizing, reinforcement-learning, artificial intelligence system. I hope that you learned something interesting in this lesson, and until next time, have a great day.